Uh, we looked at that verse this morning in Family Devotions where uh, in Zephaniah chapter 3, I think it was, where uh, he will rejo- uh, joy over thee with singing. Uh, God himself sings and he saves and, and what a blessing. He, he takes part in music, he enjoys it, he gave music to us, what a blessing. I want to, uh, uh, you can turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, and we see an example of real love there. Real love. And we don't actually know love until you know the Lord. Uh, we, you know, we, there's probably all sorts of experts that, there, there's probably books on love from a secular point of view. Did you know you can't understand love from a secular point of view? You don't even come to know love until you know the Lord. And then you have to know him as your Savior and then have a right relationship with him. And then you begin to understand what love is. And, and tonight, I want to talk about real love, and my point tonight is, real love says no. Real love says no. And we're going to look at that tonight, and, and, uh, and, and I, I want to look at part of the family, and then the next time I speak, it won't be next week, um, a Brother Moore is with us next Thursday. But the next time I speak on a Thursday night, we'll, we'll finish this idea up. But 1 John 4, let's go to verse 7. Uh, Beloved, let us love one another. And again, part of loving one another comes from being beloved, being part of the beloved, being saved. And he explains that. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. So anyone who's really loving is saved. And if they're not saved, they're not really loving. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. In this was manifested. So it's almost like uh, Romans 5, 8, where it says God commended or God proved, God demonstrated. Here it says God, uh, it was manifested, his love was manifested uh, in this was manifest the love of God toward us because he's, uh, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God. And again, just a reminder, we don't understand love or even love toward God until he loves us and draws us to himself and teaches us what love means. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So God is love. And did you know that, that, so so real love comes from God. And did you know that God says no? God says no. So real love says no. Not about everything, but there are some no's. He says, don't do certain things. No. Say, well, that doesn't make sense. Real love lets you do anything you want. When you love somebody, you, you affirm all that they do. And that's not true. Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at this. So uh, real love, uh, mixed in with real love, you can't have real love unless there's a no built in because God is the example of real love and he says no concerning certain things. So um, again, uh, uh, well, I thought love was letting me do what I want. I, I thought love was trusting me to make my own decisions. I thought love was constant affirmation regarding the things that I do. Nope, you thought wrong. <laughs> we see some no's. We see, we see some very famous no's called the Ten Commandments. Uh, Exodus 20 and, and Deuteronomy 5. Uh, so here, God, in his real love, he says, don't do certain things. He says, no. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Exodus 23. What God wants is best for us. If you put something else in front of him, you're disobeying. It's not up for debate. Uh, the, these, uh, uh, there's, there's no, well, let's, let's debate these Ten Commandments. Ah, uh-uh. God doesn't say, hey, let's open this up for discussion. He just says, listen, don't do certain things. It's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. I am love. I am real love. And part of real love says, don't do certain things. no. Love is not letting us have what we want here. Love is not God trusting us to make our own decisions. Love is God telling us uh, to do certain things, and some of those things are included in no. 
Secondly, thou shalt not make it unto thee any graven image. So constructing idols or, or, or even for us, we, we, we don't build things for the purpose of, of bowing down to them, but we, we do build things and then bow down to them uh, metaphorically. We, we make idols of all sorts of things in, in America here. Anything you worship more than God is a graven image, something we form and then bow, bow down to clothes, uh, cars, uh, sports, our jobs, we can start to bow down to things ahead of God. Again, love does not let us have what we want here. Love does not trust us to make our own decisions. Love demands that we trust God and obey. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord uh, God in vain. Uh, don't use the precious name of God in vain. Use it respectfully, whether speaking to him or about him. But what if I, no, this is not open for discussion. But I only meant to, it doesn't matter. Don't use it in vain. But I didn't mean for it to sound that way. And, well, if it did, you disobeyed, repent and get right. It's not, God, real love says no. Just don't do it. Don't take his name in vain. Um, number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now here, it's, it's not really a thou shalt not, but in a sense it is. Um, thou shalt, there's a day of worship. In the Old Testament, it was the Sabbath. In the New Testament, when Jesus rose the first day of the week, uh, and he changed the day of worship to Sunday, the first day of the week. Um, but there's a, there's a day of worship, and God wants us to treat it uh, set apart distinctly from the other days. And so if we would say, well, I want to treat Sunday like any other day, God says, no. Uh, and then uh, it's not up for debate. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother. And again, this isn't really a no, except that uh, if, if we say, um, well, I, I don't feel like honoring them. I want to dishonor them. And God says, no, you're not allowed. It's very important to show our parents respect. And it says thy father and thy mother. You can't pick your favorite parent and just honor them. Um, so it's, it's, it's honor, honor your father and your mother. That word honor, if you look up that word in the, in the Hebrew, it has the idea of heaviness, heaviness. And, and the idea there is not to take lightly uh, what they have to say. You can, you can disregard much of what's said down here on earth. Unfortunately, many of the politicians, you can say, <laughs> and just disregard and roll your eyes. Um, but your parents, you should never roll your eyes in disregard. God says, honor your father and your mother. And he just says to do it. Thou shalt not kill is number six. A simple but important rule. Um, yes, God makes allowances for corporal punishment or times of war. But this is just, there, here's another non-negotiable. And, and we were like, but I was really upset. <laughs> and you disobeyed. It's a non-negotiable. There's no buts. He has rules for us. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, verse 14, the marriage altar is to mean something. Marriage in the Bible is until death do you part. We're not free to fall in and out of love and just move from partner to partner. We're not free to follow our heart. No matter how pretty the Disney song is that just gets a hold of our emotions. Or how the Disney movie ends up. I, I watched the movie and they didn't seem to do it God's way. And, and they ended up so happy. And it's in the fiction section. It's not real. Young people prefer the, the pop song in the movie to real life. But the pop song in the movie are lying to you. Boy, here, you know, you have some, well, I, I just can't stand living with my husband. And I don't believe God wants me to be unhappy. God isn't anti-happiness, so I'll just find another man that I can be happy with. Uh-uh, there's no, there, there, it's, it's a non-negotiable here. Thou shalt not commit adultery. God is love, and real love says no to certain things. Uh, number nine, thou shalt not, or number eight, thou shalt not steal. Another non-negotiable, and you say, well, this, this country is, you know, systemically racist, and so the shoplifting is owed to me. Thou shalt not steal. There's, there's, there's no way around that. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Not to slander, not to lie about someone else. But it's their fault. They hurt me, and I'm just using my mouth to hurt them back. I am the sowing to their reap, I am the reaping to their sowing. You know, uh, no, God says not to bear false witness. Be honest. Be kind. Number 10, thou shalt not covet. To covet means to be so jealous of something 
uh, that somebody else has, you want it desperately. It makes you miserable. And a lot of times it's like, I was happy with my life until I saw your life, you know. Uh, I was, you know, I, I could be on social media, and social media, boy, uh, triggers the envy of this world. You look on there, and, boy, I thought my vacation was pretty exciting, but I, I realized it was miserable compared to what these people were able to do with all their whatever filters that they, you know, put through their, their whatever it is. So real love says no. Real love says no. And, and you say, well, that was after the fall. But these are not the first thou shalt nots in the Bible. Did you know that there's a thou shalt not before the fall? The thou shalt not isn't a result of man's sin. God, in his real love, before man fell, there was a thou shalt not. You ready for this? In Genesis 2, verses 15 through 17, uh, and God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree thou mayest freely eat. And so he, he put him in there to dress and keep it. He had responsibility. He had the blessings of the garden. And then in verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not. You see, the thou shalt nots didn't start with the Ten Commandments. The thou shalt nots were here. And, and, and it was before the fall. A, a loving God had two perfect people without a sin nature. And he, and he said, no! How much more do we need no's when we have our sinful nature? The thou shalt nots were not just a result of the, of the fall. Uh, here he says, in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. So he gave them responsibility, and even before the fall, he gave them restraint. No. The first one, here, it's, it's a very serious and clear command. And he doesn't really give much explanation. He says, here's a tree, don't eat from it. It's like, Anna, I don't know if your explanation is satisfactory. Man, again, uh, Pre-fall, man, I hope was, was, more, was, was more sensible, but we're pretty dumb sometimes. You know, Brother, Brother Gibbs, he says, there's the smart way to do things, and then there's the less smart way. <laughs> there's the smart way, and then there's the dumb way. But, but anyway, that's why he's a lawyer. You know, there's the smart way, and you chose the less smart way. <laughs> the less than smart way. Oh, yeah, that doesn't, that sounds so wonderfully euphemistic. All right. So, He's very serious, and there's a very clear command without explanation and a very serious consequence. You say, that's not love. Adam and Eve should have been able to sample the sin and then make a decision for themselves. Uh, that's the way this world around us thinks. And that line of thinking slips into churches when you're not close to God. They would say, well, that's oppression from God. He didn't trust them enough to think these things through for themselves and make an intelligent and informed decision. Did you know there's no such thing as an intelligent and informed decision if it's contrary to what God said? There's nothing intelligent about it. And there's nothing truly informed about it. The one guy who truly knew God above said not to, and I don't know where you got your informed decision from. That's all the information we need. Anything else is just wrong. God didn't trust them. Well, well, well love trusts. Love trusts people to make up their own minds. He is not a good God. No, the, 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 the real crime is when we refuse to trust him, not when he fails to trust us. How arrogant are we at times? Nowhere does God ask them if they understand. He just makes a command. He doesn't say, do you see where I'm coming from? Uh, do you agree with my decision? Uh, boy, I, I don't know, can you hear Adam? Well, I, I, I got to thinking that maybe uh, what you have to say doesn't make all that much sense. Uh, just looking at it, of course, we know that Eve did go through this process. Uh, I don't know that it looks as bad as you're letting on. My mind says it might not be so bad. Isn't it something that a rebellious man 
when, when we should be blown away at how good God is to us, how good God was to the beginnings of our race with just two people, we should be blown away with how good God is to us. And instead, rebellious man is blown away that God would ever tell me I can't have something that I think would make me happy. Oh, God, deliver us from us. Oh, we have that no one tells me no, right? Except for the people who truly love you and know what real love is because real love says no. You know what? We need more believers that trust God when he says no. Ever since, you know, somebody said, um, uh, ever since God made us in his image, we have been trying to remake him in ours. And it doesn't work that way. And, and down here, we're just certain that a loving God would never ever deny us uh, from those things that we are convinced would make us happy. The, the real God of love loves us with real love. And real love says no about certain things. Let's not resent that. Let's delight in the reality of his love. We need believers who will say, listen up. I serve a wonderful God who says no. And I'm grateful for a God who loves me and says no about certain things that would bring destruction. Not only do we need more believers that will simply trust and obey God, even when he gives us a no that we don't like sometimes or understand. Hopefully we try to like and understand. But we, we, we just need to trust and obey. But you know what? We need, we need men that will love their wives enough to say no at certain times. These words jumped out to me. In Genesis 3, 1 through 6. I'm going to read this. You can turn there if you'd like. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. And hopefully, ladies, you didn't bristle. Like, uh-oh, he just turned, took, took a wrong turn. And hopefully, man, you didn't like, oh, how dare he, right? I mean, what's he going to say, right? All right? Uh, we need men. We need men that can look at their wives in love. If God loves us and real love says no at times, then man, if you love your wife the right way, you'll be able to say, no, hon, we can't do that. We're not doing that. It's quiet in here. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Now that's interesting because God didn't say, Neither shall ye touch it. I don't know why she added that in. I don't know if it was an early attempt at standards. Standards. It could be that, uh, and, and again, standards make sense. The, the, the command was don't eat it. And if, and if I, you know, again, I'd like to think if the command was don't eat it, I would say, all right, family, eating that tree brings death. No eating. And then let's take it a step further. Let's have an extra layer of protection. Let's not even touch it. Let's not go near it. I, I would kind of like to, to hear, you know, I wish the Bible said, and Adam found mud. And from the mud he formed brick. And with the brick, he built a block wall around the tree, restricting access to it from, you know, henceforth. That would be really fun. Nobody, would, But again, God, it was God's will for there to be access to disobedience. And, and so I, God wouldn't have allowed him to, but it seems like possibly it could have been early standards. And that, and you say, well, what's the difference between a standard and a conviction? The conviction would be, listen, don't eat of that tree, it brings death. And then a standard would be like, let's make an extra layer of safety. Let's not touch it. Let's not go near it. Let's invent caution tape and, and put it way around there. We never go past the caution tape. We don't even think about it. We steer clear of it altogether. And then God didn't say put caution tape out there. God didn't say it. But it, but it could be that they thought, let's have an extra layer of safety. And that's a good thing. You have, you have standards. 
And that's what those are, saying, listen, this is such a big deal. Let's back off even more. I don't want to live on the edge of sin. I want to back away and be over here. I don't want to live a step away from sin. I want to live over here far from sin. And that's what standards are. That's why standards are important. When you fight against standards, you're saying, why can't I live next to the line? Because you're not interested in what God wants. You're interested in playing with sin. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, she decided to decide for herself, and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her. That's what that's what bothers me. Her husband with her. Oh, well, he loved her too much to stand in the way of her intelligent decision. No, he loved himself or something too much to, well, I don't know, I don't want to start a confrontation. But real love would have said, huh, no, we're not, we're not going to talk to this guy. Whoever this creature is, he, he's, he's saying that our creator is a liar. Let's, let's not talk to him. And then for sure, let's not decide if what he has to say has any merit. And let's for sure not eat of the tree. You see what our God did for us? Huh, no! Real love says no. And her husband with her just watched. I, I, I love her too much not to relinquish headship of my home to her and allow her to lead our home into sin. That's how much I love her. No. Real love says no. And the right man of God is going to say, hon, we can't do that. We're not doing that. God is our example of real love. We don't know what real love is until you study God. And real love says no. And so man, if you love God, there'll be times where you say, family, no. We're not doing that. No, hon, the, the social media, and I'm not saying all social media is bad, but, but how many of our ladies are, are into some stuff that's pulling them away from God? Pulling them away from spiritual things. And, and a husband that say, well, I, I, I can sense the coil deviled, uh, the, 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 the devil coiled right there and giving her alternate viewpoints, but I don't want to say anything because I trust her. No, you don't, that's not real love. Real love would say, hon, stop. Stop listening to those other viewpoints and allowing your mind to be filled with, filled with doubt. Uh, you're less convinced in the, on the authority of God's word and, 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 and you're less convinced with the, the, the preaching and the value. Listen, hon, whatever that is, it's not good and we're going to step away. Well, who may, God did. God gave me the authority to say no and real love can say no. No, hon, I love you. But that friend of yours that you want to hang out with doesn't care for our church or our pastor's wife. Be kind, yes, but don't make people your dear friends that are openly antagonistic to the things that our church stands for. Things of modesty, purity, things of carefulness uh, in the areas of music and on and on. Men, some of you need to, uh, I think bitterness gets it, attacks our ladies in a special way. And you can't just, well, I'll just, I'll give her space. I think we need some men to say, listen, hon, you've been bitter about some things. You've been hurt. And Hebrews chapter 12 says that there's grace that's available to help you, to have victory and forgiveness. We're going to say no to the bitterness. Real love says no. There was a man visiting not too long ago. And he was talking about an, another church and he was saying, boy, pastor, I, I don't know if, if it's the same here, but it seems like it's, at our other church, it's like dad is the caboose of the family. Dad's the caboose. And, uh, and mom's bitter at the front of the train. She's the locomotive. And dad kind of likes the church. I, I kind of I like the church. <laughs> but, but long ago, mom has derailed. And the locomotive is off the tracks and the coal car is off the tracks and car by car, ch uh, children off the tracks. And Dad's the last one to know. He's the caboose of the family. 
And he comes and says, hey, pastor, I, I guess we're leaving. I kind of thought we were a fit, but I guess we aren't. And then poof, he's jerked off as the rest of the detrailed train, derailed train yanks him off. Listen, we need some men that say, hon, we're not going to live in bitterness and unforgiveness. We're not doing it. All right, ladies, I got on you. Now let me get on the men for a minute. Not only do we need more believers that will simply trust and obey God, um, um, even when he gives a no, but we need some men that can say no to themselves. You know, the Bible, the Bible doesn't command against self-love. It assumes it. Matthew 22, verses 36 and 40, it talks about love your neighbor as thyself. We all love ourselves. And men, us especially. <laughs> the Bible talks a couple times about, uh, in, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, where it talks about wives loving, uh, or husbands loving their wives a couple times in their, it, oh, it's just, it seems to talk a lot about how affectionate men are toward themselves. And by the way, men, our ladies would be much more ready to listen to us, give them an affectionate, hon, no, I love you, and we're not doing that. They'll be way more easily, they'll be way more ready to listen to that no when they know you've been able to tell yourself no in certain things. Listen, real love says no, and I've been able to look at some things in my life and say no. Ephesians 5, 22 through 29 says this. Wives, submit, to your, uh, sub submit your, yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. He has the authority. In fact, real love will say no. And it's his job to say no at times. Even as Christ is the head of the church. <laughs> oh, what an example. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ. And so it says, it basically, it's like, it's like, men, you want to know how to love them? Study Christ, and guess what you'll see? Well, it says, even as Christ, also, how did he manifest his love? Well, when you study Christ, you see that he loved the church and gave himself for it. By the way, even Jesus himself was able to say no to himself. Uh, there was that time there in, in Luke chapter 22 where he said, oh, God, let this cup pass from me. And we don't know exactly what that cup was. I, I suspect it had something to do with that separation. The separation from the one that he had always had perfect unity with, his father. And then the tasting of the sin of all mankind and the gruesomeness and, and then being the, the focal point of the displeasure of his father. I, I, somewhere in there, there was a cup that he said, oh, let this cup pass from me. But he says, nevertheless, not my will. Oh, man, it's, it's easy, much easier to follow somebody that's able to deny self for the good of someone else. He told himself, no, not my will, but thine be done. Verse 26, uh, we're talking about uh, that, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle nor any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So men, uh, so ought men to love their wives. And so, and so and, and a, there's, he gives us a couple places to study. He says, if you want to learn how to love your wife, Two places to study. Study Christ, how he loved the church, and then men, study yourselves, how you love yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. Study Christ and, and, and be blown away at how, how he loved the church, but then men, study, study your, yourself, and, and then take a lesson from how much you love yourself. So men ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord of the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love him, uh, his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So, men, if real love will say no. 
There will be times where, hey, hon, we're not doing that anymore. No. No. Well, that's, uh, yes, that is real love can say no at the right. No, we're not doing that. But it's way easier for your wife to follow you when she's seen a man that can say no to himself. Hey, hon. Hey, I, I, I've been doing this. And I don't think it's pleasing to the Lord. And I'm done. Because I think if I give that thing up, I'll be a better husband and a better father. And you guys are worth it. I'm telling myself, no. Real love can say no. Hey, hon, you know, I... From time to time, I watch some stuff on my phone or the computer or some other screen... And, you know, the world, I, I try to stay away from the R-rated stuff, but PG-13, I'm older than 13. All that stuff is good. Oh, I mean, you know, don't, don't ask the Holy Spirit about that. All the cussing, the immodesty, and then not just open innuendo, but well beyond. Hey, hon, I've been watching some stuff, whatever it is, and, and I, I need to be careful about that. It affects the way I think. I'm not the spiritual man that I, I should be. I'm done. I'm telling myself no. Real love can say no. Uh, what about this one? Hey, hon, I'm, I'm out of control with my eating in this one area. And I think it's going to cut my life short or cause health issues that, that could have been avoided. And it will just complicate your life later on. I've been selfish in that area. I'm going to take, get better care of my health. I'm going to tell myself no so that I can be around a little bit longer and look after you for as long as the Lord will allow. I'm telling myself no. Or hey, hey, hon, I come back from work and I just want to relax. And in the morning I want to just look after myself. I haven't been the spiritual head that I should be because I'm kind of lazy in some areas. This family needs a dad who's right with God and concerned with aiming the whole household at him. I'm telling myself no when my craving for laziness comes. So many men can't tell themselves no in some pretty obvious places. It's like there are ladies out there that are married to children in adult bodies, men that can't control their temper, Men that are selfish can't control their spirit. Just doing what he wants and thinking that's what manliness is. And real love can say no. You know, from the very beginning, the first two people, they didn't like God's no. And it got us into a heap of trouble. Let's delight in the no's of God. And they don't just come from God, do they, men? Some of those no's need to, I, I need to tell myself no in some areas. Wives, um, if your husband says, hey, honey, we're not doing that anymore. How dare, hey, no, 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 real, real love. Let's learn to appreciate real love and the no's that must flow from real love and then delighting in the real love of God and the no's that he gives us in scripture. Next time we'll, we'll talk about parents and saying no to their children. It's a bigger battle than we realize. But real love says no.